Yeah, this, this is a trap. If you don't believe me, check this out. On January 19th, Canon announced what, in my opinion, is their most impressive camera to date, the R5C. The spec sheet on this was out of this world. They told us about all the amazing photo features they had ported over from the original R5, and then we saw the cinema features. With the flip of a switch, we saw something we had never seen before, the Canon cinema menus and operating system on a mirrorless camera. And I'm talking everything waveforms, false color, and even shutter angle. And so, as the internet does, we had to compare it to something. So just like that, questions started piling up. What does this mean for the Canon Z70? I mean, the R5C has a full frame sensor, shoots 8K, and can shoot RAW. All things that are missing from the Z70. So the R5C is clearly the better camera, right? Well, Canon had one more trick up their sleeve, and that was an update for the C70 that now gave the C70 a fighting chance. Now, in order to compare two cameras properly, you have to take them out side by side. So I called up my friend Marcus, who actually owns two C70s, and we met up at a local studio here in Houston, and it was time to put both of these cameras to work. Now for me, when it comes to comparing any two cameras side by side, you have to start with the images you're getting from the cameras. So for this first test, I tried to match these two camera settings as closely as possible. But after literally two seconds, we hit our first major problem. Remember when I said the R5C has a full frame sensor? Well, that C70 does not, and it changes a lot. For starters, the size of the sensor is going to change the frame of view of the camera, but also full frame sensors allow in more light. Luckily though, Marcus had the Canon 0.71 EF2 RF speed booster mount. Now, typically when you're testing cameras, you don't wanna add in any factors that can skew the results, but with this being a product from Canon, I decided to let it slide. Now, the 0.71 speed booster doesn't get the C70 super 35 millimeter sensor all the way to full frame, but for the sake of this test, it was good enough. Looking at the footage, there were a few things that stood out to me. Now, yes, I did have both of these cameras set to 4K XAVC mode, but the Canon R5C 4K looks sharper. I'm fairly sure that this had to do with the fact that the R5C is downsampling the 8K to 4K, hence the sharper image. I got these shots using my Zine cinema lenses, which I love the look and characteristics of. I used the exact same lens on both in order to ensure that we were getting a decent comparable image. Another big takeaway I learned from this little test here was trying to get these two cameras to match wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. Now, you might be thinking, well, why do you want them to match in the first place? Well, based on a lot of you guys' comments over on the R5C video, and yes, I do read the comments, a lot of people are thinking about picking up the R5C as a B or C camera for the C70. So while yes, I am trying to discover which camera is the best because, well, hey, this is YouTube, I'm also trying to see in a real world application, how well will these two cameras work together? Now, renting a studio and testing these two cameras isn't cheap. So I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Switcher Studio. Switcher Studio is an app that allows you to create high quality live streams and be able to post them on all the major live streaming platforms. This includes Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and many others. You can create a stunning live stream using, get this, an iOS device. With their platform, you can link up to nine streams of video from an iOS device to be able to have an amazing multicam experience. Not only can you do that, but there are other tons of pro features, such as the ability to have logos, lower thirds, and even calls to action on screen. Switcher Studio is an amazing app for those of you who are looking to take your live streams to the next level without adding any super complicated extra equipment. Switcher Studios was also awesome enough to offer a free month for everyone who uses promo code BWASH. Definitely check out the links down below in the description for Switcher Studios because if you're thinking about doing live streams, this might just be the easiest way to do it. 
So for the next test, I wanted to move the camera and see how they could handle a more challenging lighting setup. I moved Travis, our subject, over to another room and decided to film him with just a single light. Now, unfortunately, there was a skylight at this location where we were filming and we didn't really have the time or the resources to be able to flag it off. So I had to try to get my exposure adjusted in camera, which was a great second test, but this is where I found yet another problem. Flipping back and forth between these two cameras, with the C70, dialing in my exposure was easy, thanks to one major factor, the built-in NDs. I had forgotten how much I missed built-in NDs. With just a tap of a button, I could adjust my exposure and get a frame that I was happy with. This is not the same case on the R5C. Now, typically, using NDs is not a foreign process for me whatsoever, but when you're using a camera on set that has them built in, it's hard not to wish you had them in every other camera on set. After only a few hours of testing these two cameras, I was already seeing a fairly big difference between the two cameras and how they functioned. So which camera is best? Well, to figure this out, there were two more tests that I wanted to run on these cameras. And the first being autofocus. Now, when the C70 first came out, I gave it a lot of crap about the autofocus, not really being too great. But since then, the camera has been given a few updates. And so now I wanted to test this out. Now for this test, I couldn't use the cinema lenses, so I went with the Canon RF 24-70 on both cameras. Now, my expectations going into this test were fairly biased. See, the R5C has eye autofocus, where the C70 only has face autofocus. But I was fairly surprised that they were equally matched. Now, sure, in my editor, I went through frame by frame to look to see which camera I could see was really holding on better, and the R5C did slightly do a better job, but not by much. So, it's fair to say that when it came to most of these tests we did, these two cameras were fairly evenly matched, but now it was time to really push these cameras. For this test, I said screw trying to make them match and let's see what they can do at their best. So for this, I put the R5C in AK RAW. Now earlier I mentioned that Canon gave the C70 an update to give it a fighting chance and that update was RAW. Now that the C70 has RAW, how does the RAW stand up to the newer R5C? Well, for starters, RAW doesn't actually change the sensor in any way, so you're still getting 4K RAW compared to 8K RAW. So let's keep this brief. Looking at the RAW from both cameras, as you can imagine, there was a bit more noise in the shadows, but that's something that you can expect from any camera shooting RAW. When shooting RAW, the camera doesn't apply in-camera noise reduction because, well, it's RAW. I was pleasantly surprised though that the image from the C70 wasn't much noisier than the R5C despite having the smaller sensor. It was honestly hard to tell the difference, and then once you actually graded them, it was practically impossible. I think we have an issue. We have two cameras that are very different, but they perform very similarly. When it comes to the shots that you get from each camera, I honestly find that the R5C is only slightly better. But this is obviously due to the AK sensor. And where yes, the C70 does have slightly better dynamic range, it isn't enough for the average or even the well-trained eye to notice. So which camera is better? Well, honestly, I think the only way to decide which is better for you is to do the one thing that I don't think I've ever recommended, and that is to look at everything except the image. For example, as a creator, you have to think about how you plan to shoot. With the C70, you don't have to buy or pack ND filters. Also, you have a battery that will power the camera and all of its features for many hours without the need of an external solution. Add in the mini XLRs for audio and you have a very suitable camera for 90% of your video, video being the key word there, your video needs. Now sure, the C70 is a bit more expensive, but think about all the money that you'll save from not having to buy a ton of extra batteries and NDs. You might just break even. Now, on the flip side of that, the R5C, you have a weapon that the C70 just can't even compete with, and that is 
photography options. If you have to buy the C70 and then you need to buy a photo camera, you could be shelling out another two grand. So just off the bat, if you need a photo camera, it's a no brainer. You buy the R5C. Sure, the R5C has its faults, but most of them can be solved fairly easily. Personally, I like the CF Express Type B card slot and SD slot over the two SD slots in the C70, but that's a personal decision. The R5C is an amazing camera and so is the C70, but the way you will have to interact with each of them is drastically different. So if you're torn between the two, I say think about how you plan to use them because the image out of each of them is fairly compatible. Now, that said, if you are thinking of picking up the R5C as a B cam for a C70, you will need to make minor adjustments to your exposure on each, so I strongly recommend trusting your waveform. Personally, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these two cameras, but for me, the right camera is going to be the R5C solely because of the photography side. As a content creator, I know at some point I will need to take a photo, and it's nice to have a camera that can do that even if that means I have to wait eight seconds. Thanks for checking out this video. Hit the subscribe button for more videos like this one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.